All right, what is going on, everyone? Welcome back to another Sandstorm meetup today. I am joined by the team over at Atari X. I uh, appreciate you all coming on today to speak with me. Happy to be here. Thanks for having us. Usually, I, I like to start out with a little bit of an introduction. Let uh, each one of you guys go through and, and you know tell everyone about yourself and, and what role you play on the Atari X team. You know how you got into Web three. So you know whoever wants to go first, feel free. Absolutely. You said me first. I'm sorry. Absolutely. Uh, NFT project lead here. My name's Scott. Um, I started with Atari, uh, let's say end of May, early June, uh, right after Atari X was launched. And I, I handle anything from just, you know, some creative visions, some brainstorming, some organization, um, really just a art of wearing multiple hats. Yeah. Were you heavy in the, in the NFT space before uh, joining Atari? Yeah. So as a consumer, I was. And as a builder, I pretty much got into the space by just helping creators and builders pro bono um, just to get more exposure to the space. I had a lot of Web2 experience uh, with project management, biz, deve biz development, um, but not much in the space for, for the Web3 side. So I took about eight, eight to 10 months of just helping various projects out there um, just to get a, a better footing myself. Uh, to try to apply some of the uh, principles and, and thought processes I had in my Web 2 journey into Web 3. Awesome. awesome. And and I, I will say for, for anyone looking to get in this space, Scott's uh, um, path in when, when I first it was a mutual connection of ours. He worked on a project with a couple of our, our developers. And uh, when I got intro to him and he's like, yeah, I'm explaining exactly that, especially the pro bono work, just because he, he wanted to get in and, and enjoyed it. Just hearing that, I was like, I understood his intentions right away, uh, especially with the space. And, and it was like, all right, well, let's bring this guy on right away. Um, so so for any people who, who are, you know, maybe wanting to get in and, and figuring out, you know, just talk to people and, 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 and offer up your services. Obviously, working pro bono or free is never fun, but some, sometimes <laughs> it's the only way to, to get into to certain avenues. Um, yeah. obviously we like paying people as much as possible. <laughs> Everyone works for free at Atari. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Tyler or car, car fries. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Car fries. Car fries. What, so what, what, uh, what role do you guys play on the Atari team? Um, I'll go ahead. I'm, uh, so I'm Carly car fries. I don't know if anybody's seen the movie fired up. That's where it came from. Um, there was a guy who kept calling his girlfriend, whose name was Carly, all these ridiculous names. So my sister called, started calling me Curly Fries, Carly Fries. And that's that's where that came from. But anyways, I am the social and community manager um, over at Atari X. I help out with some of the marketing and operations and all those kinds of fun things. As Scott said, we like to wear a lot of hats. Nice. And, and then, uh, yeah, so... I'm director of Atari X. Um, I run blockchain for, for Atari as a whole. Um, came on board uh, for this role in April, or March, April of this year. Um, and uh, we really wanted to, to change up everything Atari's doing in the space and, and, and really make it about gaming, uh, utility, and just fun experiences. And uh, that's why we created Atari X to, to be able to have a place where we can bring the whole community together and, and, and support partnerships like the Sandbox and, and actually um, um, have a good mission and, and uh, an ethos behind everything we're doing. Um, so that's why uh, this is kind of our dream team with Atari X. Obviously, we have the developers who, who, who are, are great as well, but the, they're, they're a little bit more camera shy. Yeah, I was I was going to talk about, you know, Atari, obviously one of, you know, anyone watching you're probably like, I've heard my dad talk about Atari. Uh, yes, this is the Atari uh, pioneers in the gaming industry. I mean, if you've, you've heard of Pong or just the console where you could play Donkey Kong, Frogger, all those different games. Um, I, I guess what role does the uh, the original Atari company play in Atari X? Do they are they any part of it? Yeah, yeah. Um, the short answer is very, very part of it all. Um, we have a newer CEO, Wade Rosen. He came on board uh, just over a year ago, and and he wanted to bring back Atari to, to what it was, what it meant to him when he was a kid, um, and and really focus on gaming and, and new experiences. And um, 
he loves the web three space. He, he loves the technology of it all. Uh, I was on with him for three hours yesterday, post, post our, our first internal project, um, just ideating and going through everything. And he, he's just an absolute fan. And, and so, um, all of us are employees of, of main Atari, um, uh, corporate, uh, if you, if you'll say, and, yeah. um, and are very much active in, in all parts of the business. Um, meaning we, we are very cross team and, and collaborative. Uh, it's, it's, we operate more as a startup with a big brand. So, uh, we're able to be pretty agile and, and make some changes. And, and that's the only way that it would work in, in especially in web three is to have that, that agile quick start type of, 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 uh, uh, business overall. Um, mm -hmm. so it allows us the freedom to really go out and, and, and do some cool things and some, take some risks. But at the same time, we have the, the big brand of Atari um, um, right behind us and supporting us in any way possible. Yep, yep. I mean, I, that's one of the things I love about the Web3 space is you're just seeing a bunch of different companies come in, a bunch of older companies. I mean, I've seen Radio Shack is doing, you know, NFT marketplaces and stuff. And then you have Atari, GameStop, all these different these different companies coming in. Uh, I think it's great. Uh, and, and Atari has been in the Web3 space already for a while now. I want to say like 2019, I think I was reading on your website. Yeah, the, the, I think the Seb's actually said this. I didn't know this until Seb told me this, that um, uh, Atari was the first sandbox partner. I always oh, wow. thought we were one of the first. And I know and So I think that they uh, initially in, in 2018. Um, and uh, yeah, Atari moved in fast, which is good for, for, you know, being a brand in the gaming space is, um, you know, we've seen some challenges of, 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 of gaming companies moving into the Web3 space and the pushback that they get. But we've been here for, for a long time, so it makes it all just a little bit easier. Obviously, there's going to be some naysayers and, and some pushback in, in, certain, in certain areas. But um, yeah, just being such a first mover has really helped us and allowed us to, to to try new things and and be more accepted within the community, but we're also you know it's, it's all Web three native. It it feels right. It, it, everything we're doing is is you know it, it feels native. This is a lot of Web three is is gaming is is metaverse, and uh, us as Atari as a brand, it, it it all makes sense for us to be here, which which also helps. Yeah, yeah, and, and you mentioned sandbox. Um, you know, Atari has a massive plot of land on the sandbox. How how big is the Atari? Plot. So we have uh, 12 estates in, in Sandbox. I think I usually am off by two on here because I, I get a mix. We either have 974 or 972. I think it's 972 uh, 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 land plots overall. Oh, wow. So 12 assets and then individual one by one, 972 uh, parcels. So uh, it's a lot. And yeah. uh, so I, I won't go too much. At the, I'll talk about it a little bit, I'm sure, um, is what we're going to do with all that and and uh, some of our initial thoughts um, because it's too much that, that we can handle uh, just just internally. So we have, we have a lot of community things that we want to do. Yeah, like 9A, 7A, 7 chat, the exp alpha experience is big. So you guys did launch with uh, alpha season three. You guys had an experience in there. Uh, yep. what, I guess, uh, what is the theme of that experience? So, so the, its name is uh, Atari Sunnyvale, and uh, and that's a, a nod to uh, Sunnyvale, California, and mm -hmm. where Atari was founded in, in 1972 by Nolan Bushnell. Uh, that was our campus. It was pretty cool if you look back at the old pictures. Um, and uh, and this is kind of uh, just a collection of, of 17 of our, our major IP. Um, some interesting ones as well, like like um, uh, uh, Black Widow and 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 Crystal Castles. But then you have Pong, Centipede, uh, Missile Command, uh, Millipede right there that was just on screen. Um, Asteroids. So it's a uh, it's it's a collection of of kind of our our core IP, our our core games, and uh, really wanted to to show the experience in in not only just a visual way, but and give it some depth and give it height and 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 have some cool experiences. And and with that cool experiences, um, you'll see portals around uh, Sunnyvale where those will be games. So there's one live that you can go in right now and that's Crystal Castles. And it, it feels like 
Crystal Castle is on the 2600, but in the sandbox. So we're working on, on that gamification and actually creating these games um, in the sandbox environment um, where there may be a new experience and you've never heard of Crystal Castles and, and will be fun. But then if you play the, the original and uh, Bentley Bear and everything, it, it will be fun. And there's some, some cool Easter eggs, um, especially around Bentley Bear uh, with that experience. Uh, you mentioned that there's one portal active that's going to be Crystal Castles. What are some of the other ones that people will be able to go to and when, I guess, when will they be able to go to them? Yeah, so it, uh, that will be the only one open for this season. Um, the next two, which we haven't said what those two will be, um, will be available for the next season. Um, and, uh, but examples of, of ones that, that will be available are, are, um, Centipede, Black Widow, um, we're working on Asteroids and, and Missile Command and, and what all, what all these type of experiences, uh, look like and feel like, obviously working within, um, the sandbox environment. So. It's an interesting take on on uh, on what we can do and and uh, and really use creativity to to bring it to the sandbox. Yeah, and then my next question was going to be, I guess, what Brian uh, mentioned in the chat. He said he picked up an Atari Sandbox NFT. Uh, do you guys have your own uh, NFT assets that people are able to purchase off the marketplace? Yeah, absolutely. So we launched an initial collection, and then with uh, Alpha Three uh, opening up. We have uh, additional assets um, and, and some, some really cool ones. Some of the legendaries I, I think are, are, are awesome from, uh, um, uh, yeah. The, 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 the Black the Widow one's one. really cool. Black I love Widow. the Black Widow one. Yeah. And then there's the Missile Command ships. Big fans of those. They look great. And then the, the Pegasus, is, I think, is the one I was trying to think of the name of. And it's from Sword Quest. That one's great. Sword, Sword Quest, un, underrated IP overall. Uh, we'll be doing some cool stuff with that. Nice, nice. And, and who did you guys have in-house people build all these, you know, build the land, the different voxels and stuff? Or, did, you know, was there a team that you guys outsources to? Yeah, um, well, this is what's great about our, our sandbox partnership. Um, we worked with Seb and the sandbox team on on building everything out. Um, so so uh, this was built with the sandbox team. Uh, specifically not not even um uh one of the the initial third party partners yeah um and so it was able to you know we're working with the team and and seeing what the limits could be and then working with them through through the entire experience um the mini game was was uh built by firefly studios now i'm blanking on, on what they changed their name to um in the past uh month um, I'll, I'll bring that up in a sec. And, uh, and they're great. They were gr absolute great studio and, uh, they'll be, uh, building our, our other games as well. And so we're really pushing, you know, the boundaries of, of, of the sandbox and what can be done and trying to come up with really cool concepts. Um, and that's that the trailer that's playing perfect. as well. That's the mm -hmm. Crystal Castles yeah. game that, um, previously Firefly Studios created. I think it's really cool. And, it's it's so fun working with people who have these great visions. Yeah, it is. It's really cool to see what some of these people can do and just in the sandbox. I mean, I got on there. I tried to build something. Couldn't even put like a pool in in the ground. You know, it was... I tried that too. That was the first thing I tried to do in the sandbox. I was like, oh, there's a, a builder. Like, what's this? Tried to check it out. No, nope, yeah. couldn't do it. No. Nope. <laughs> So I'll leave that to the to the professional. So in, in the Crystal Castles games that we're watching here, I mean, what are the different uh, tasks that people have to do in the game? Yeah, so it, it's much it's a it's a level through um, much like the original Crystal Castles, where there are different levels, collecting gems, uh, beating the boss Esmeralda, who's a witch um, and uh, experiencing uh, fighting off the trees and the bees, which are a major uh, part of the original game. And then uh, a cool little Easter egg with Bentley Bear and, and as you progress and what you get. Um, so those who don't know, and and pr prior to Atari, I knew just a little bit of, but there's a cult following around Bentley Bear and I'm now all about it. I love Bentley Bear, it's one of my favorite <laughs> characters in anything, not only Atari. And um, uh, it, if you don't know, check, check out some Bentley Bear stuff. It's great. Um, and there's some cool Easter eggs around Bentley in this game. I'm gonna have to check. I don't even know who Bentley Bear was. So I'm definitely gonna do some research after we get off the exactly. show. Exactly. It's again oh. underrated character. 
overall. Yeah, I just saw the Paddington joke here with Bentley. It was pretty funny. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah well, you There's go, some go different ahead. takes on Bentley. Yeah. No. Um, you guys also, I saw you guys also had a, uh, a game jam experience in the sandbox. Uh, if you guys want to talk about that a little bit. I was going to say that's a perfect when we were talking about. Um, I think it's really hard to build and I'm absolutely blown away by what other people can do. Um, we did tweet earlier today, just a reminder that um, the game jam is up and live. So that is where you can go and use um, Atari IP. Oh, there's me. To, I'm, uh, I'm in the Atari IP right now dancing on the bottom. Sorry, Carly. That's, <laughs> yeah, I'll sit for you. There we go. <laughs> Good job. Good job, Tyler. I'm stuck in the, I'm stuck in the woods back here. I might need a, a search and rescue team. Right, keep going. Keep going. Um, yeah, so the game jam. Um, so there is 30,000 sand prize pool. First place gets a 50 years of Atari NFT. And the submissions are open from September 19th to October 16th. So there's still quite a bit of time. Uh, um, we do have that tweet up on our end as well. You can find it through the sandbox. But um, I think it's pretty cool prize, prize pool. And it'll be really awesome to see what people build. Like as Atari, it's important to us to be embracing not only the players, but the builders. Like it's all part of the of the family, the community. So it'll be fun to see um, what people build. So basically the uh, idea is that you can take two of the IP and mash them up. Um, so like Alien Brigade and Food Fight kind of thing. Like that would be so cool. Um, and it'll just be nice to kind of, pull out all the builders so we can see them and engage with them. And you never know like what's going to happen in our future. Like we're always looking for cool projects and like people to work with. So like, what if we stumble across an incredible builder? Like, like we have all that land out there. What should we do with it? Like it's, it's a great opportunity to really see what, what people are doing and um, find some of the talent out there as well. Yeah. And, and that is, uh, Carly's right with that too, with, with all that land is, is, um, maybe it's this build competition, maybe it's other ones um, in the future of opening up that land and 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 uh, having a, a, a spot for for these builders to to come and be able to build things um, on our land because um, that is something that we want to do and, and create those experiences and those worlds um, within the sandbox uh, where it can all be in, in one place. But yeah, that, yeah, this build competition is cool. I'm really excited to see how people mix up some games. Um, yeah. I think there could be some really interesting concepts there. Yeah, yeah the, I mean, the creativity there is just amazing. Like to see what the sandbox came up with and like to put other people's spin on it. And like, I'm just always fascinated by other people's creativity. I have none. Um, so I just <laughs> love to see like what other people can do. Like I can imagine things in my mind. I could never get it out. Yeah. And I think, you know, what you, what, what you guys said exactly is, is the best thing is to find people in house that are building on sandbox. And maybe you find an undiscovered talent that, uh, you know, is just doing freelance work and just entering a contest. And he's like, Hey, like, you know, you want to help us build out this plot of land. And next thing you know, he's a non-paid employee at Atari and <laughs> it's a great time. <laughs> And not even just employment, right? Just the opportunity to, you know, be able to do something. Maybe it's, uh, yeah. maybe maybe if it's income generation of some sort, uh, we'll, we're figuring out business models to to work on our land and 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 how people could actually make money off of it with with their builds and things like that. So um, whether you just want the creativity or or want to be part of the community, um, we're going to be offering everything um, along all those aspects. And so, I think that's uh, important. Yeah. Um, like in everything that we're doing, whether it's a partnership, our own projects, everything that we're planning out and building, we have this vision in mind that is driven by some very core principles and those are led by the legacy of Atari. And so even like things like the game jam and like seeing who like the builders and finding those things, it's like, and I know like community and utility and things are like really thrown around in the space. like everything we're doing like we are thinking of that and those things build that it's the strength of the community it's finding a safe place where you feel like hey this is where i belong these are my people and i know like that's how i felt when i came into web3 i finally felt like i found like my place like people finally got my humor and it just felt right and i want that for well we want that for 
everybody who is a gamer, a builder, or just looking for that kind of fun group of people. Nice. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I agree. There's you can mo, all of my best friends I've met through the Internet. So I'm sure the sandbox is going to I expect to see a wedding someday in the sandbox. <laughs> um, you know, you guys work closely with the sandbox. I'm assuming, you know, that partnership is going to continue on into the future. Um, do you guys have any plans on dipping into other metaverses such as Decentraland, um, World Wide Web 3, anything like that? Um, yeah, the uh, short answer is, is yes, and, and may already be active in, in some, but um, um, uh, yes, is that is that short answer. Uh, oh, yeah. th there's, there's other experiences, and, and I think it's important to, I don't know if it's important, but it's it's interesting to, to be able to define what the metaverse is, because it means something different to almost everyone in this space, and then means something even completely different to anyone who's, who's never been in, in this space in, in before, and looks on it, looks at it from the outside in and what they think the metaverse is. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I think just the metaverse is, is that digital experience and, and it can come in, in various ways. Um, one example is, is and maybe I'll let Scott speak to this a little bit, is, is our, our portals uh, room 133 and, and what, what that experience is. So Scott, want to just maybe explain that a little bit? Yeah, so portals, uh, which started on Solana, it also supports Ethereum now. Um, is very similar to the sandbox in regards of n not many barriers, not much resistance um, for portals. You didn't need to connect the wallet. And we wanted to drop um, our, our community into an office, into an experimental R&D facility um, in Sunnyvale uh, that is actually inspired by a true location. So with what we what we wanted to do with that was, you know, we're not looking to make a game immediately, but we want to drop people into this this location where they can learn more about the history of Atari. They could then take place in this first phase of the experience, which is going to roll out. Right. So I think metaverses are great because if you have a clear purpose of what you're trying to accomplish, there's a lot of different products and platforms out there that allow you to tailor what you're trying to do, uh, given on the need. Right. So with portals, our goal was to to immersion was really the goal. Um, mm -hmm. Fun's going to come, but this was more immersion. Yeah, we have a roadmap, but why not hop into this room and walk around and, and explore and, and try to work your way out? Um, and so I think of, it's, and, and there is our virtual roadmap within that room uh, scattered around and as clues and, and Easter eggs um, yeah. as part of that escape room experience. Absolutely. So, there, you know, often what you'll see in communities is win, win, win. And, and, what we're noticing is is sometimes people may overlook things. So we built this so that it can be one of those things where down the road people are going back to it and saying, oh, now that makes sense. Or it was right under our nose the whole time. We just were so focused on getting out of the room or completing the mission because we want something for doing it. We overlooked it. So we're really big on Easter eggs and We've metaverses. We've everywhere. Yeah, metaverses are a great way to to one house and deliver Easter eggs. Yeah. Now is this a, is this like a VR experience that someone can, can do in a, in a VR headset website? I don't, well, if you can browse not, the web. Not one. VR yet. Not VR yeah. yet. Yeah. This is oh. simply just visit the site, no wallet connect, um, no install direct from browser, HTML five experience, keyboard mouse. Yeah. And, right, and as far as the other meta, other metaverses is, is, Everything is 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 open and and is interesting. I, I think, and uh, we'll be in places where we think we can provide. Obviously, like I would say yes to it all, mm -hmm. but if I did that, like we have limited resources, limited um, uh, like like everyone does, limited time. So uh, uh, we're, we're choosing projects that really we think they they could be fun in in various ways, or they're pushing the technology and, and can help onboard people um um in interesting ways um and so so there's there's some few projects that are that are coming down down the pipe that uh we're really excited for and, and we'll be making some announcements within the coming months uh maybe even in the coming week on, on yeah like what's under the table nobody one. knows yeah yeah Awesome. Awesome. As we see on the screen here, you guys have a ton of partners that you guys have uh partnered up with. Um if you want to talk about I guess some some of them 
I don't know if we can go if if we should go through all of them. I guess just some different things you guys are doing. Maybe with uh, with Artifact. I know they're partnered with Nike. Uh, Zed Run is a popular NFT project. You know, what are some different things you guys are doing with these partners? So Zed Run yeah, was so- actually my first NFT. That is how I mean, like I started to get into it um, a bit before that, and that's where I learned a lot about it. I was just really lucky. I got I as I started learning, I got airdropped. Um, one of the like a good racehorse like a z10 i think it was which is pretty good um so that's kind of where my nft journey started um and then for that partnership to come around was pretty cool um ty i think you had something you wanted to say yeah so first i wanted to shout out nifty labs those guys are 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 uh i wouldn't say saviors but that they're 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 awesome um there there are developers and um, and have worked on on projects for Truth Labs, and and they're the Goblin Town part of the Goblin Town team, and and some really cool projects out in the space, mm-hmm. and uh, they really are are pushing the limits of what can be do with smart contracts and 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 NFTs and Web three as a whole. So uh, we're we're super thankful to have to have them on board. Um, and then uh, yeah, the, the artifact one was was one of the first Atari partnerships um pre pre nike even um and just there are some of these partnerships that were just testing the waters of what can be done and this was you know even pre the hype of, of overall nfts kind of going into it um and and that was one where it showed the virality of it all those those limited edition uh artifact shoes uh went completely viral and it was mm-hmm. it was interesting to see so it's selling for over half a million in, in some aspect so that was to see one aspect of it, and it was a good learning experience. Um, uh, and uh, another and then, really fun partnership we have is the um, the Mythical Games. Uh, we dropped for Blancos with Blancos Block Party. Um, and ever since that, um, both Tyler and Scott are just constantly playing Blancos, and we have some fun um, activations coming up with that as well. But um, that's a really good example of the potential in the future for gaming and web three, um, such an easy, easy entry point and just so fun and intuitive. Um, also like our little blancos are cute as hell. So that's also <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And, yeah, and so many right with that. yeah. And well, and because so we understand our, 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 especially our place right now, at least we think we do um and and we're a brand and we're a well-known brand even though we operate in in a small agile way and 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 our goal is to help get people into the space and show them good projects good technologies and and how it's actually uh useful and beneficial and and why we believe in it um and obviously there's some divisive uh portions of of the gaming community towards anything that's mentioned nft all you have to do is go on reddit and and just look up any nft post to, to see that um, but, uh, we, we think we can help steer people to, to some of those really great projects and, and blank is a, a great example of that. It's a fun gaming experience and it's just in its infancy. Um, yeah. a lot of community driven maps and, and games. Um, and right here we, this was, we had a build competition, um, uh, Atari build competition, and there's some amazingly fun maps. Um, we'll be announcing some, some activations with that stuff soon. And uh, and just a super low entry point, and and we uh, launched these this collaboration with them um, for their uh, launch on the Epic Game Store, which is just going to open up it's the first NFT ga- or blockchain based game on the Epic Game Store. So that's just going to hope- open up a whole new avenue to people. And it you don't even really feel like you're you're working within Web three and the blockchain, but all mm-hmm. your rewards, all your gameplay, um, uh, it benefits you at the end because. If you wanted to sell your Blanco, that's like, like they're kind of these collectibles, and you can customize them and and package them up, and uh, you unbox them to start. And if you wanted to sell all, all the work you put into that, you can, and you could be rewarded. So it's a it's interesting um, uh, concept, and and we think this is going to help onboard people with quality gaming. And so that's what we're those are the type of, of partnerships and experiences we want people to see. And so we'll, those are the type of part and. Also, the team is just great. Um, we like collect- connecting with people in this space that, that have similar values to us. 
and want to see everything go in, in the same direction and want to just grow at the pie overall. So, uh, yeah, really. Tyler, like no matter that. what you do, do not look at the comments right hey, don't now. Look at the, don't, we cannot look at the chat, unfortunately. Oh, why not? <laughs> not allowed to speak on it. Can't say anything. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, nice I play, guys. I see what you did there. Uh, <laughs> That's pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> no comment. Yeah, that was, no that comment. Was, that's hilarious. I love it actually. That's, that's, like that's a that's a secret. Uh, I, I know eventually with this we'll we'll get a season of this letter. <laughs> I, don't someone, even, I don't even but, know what that means. Like, I don't know what it means right now. No, no. I, I I mean I personally love it. Let's, let's bring it. Let's bring it on. Uh, Et was a, a a very popular twenty six hundred game. Uh, yeah. Um, some say it's bad, uh, a bad game, but <laughs> others love it as a cult following. Like and there's a, it's worth a Google. There's a, I won't go too much in detail. There's a, a, a burial in New Mexico, Scott. Was it New Mexico? Uh, yeah. There's an Easter egg on the website that'll tell you exactly where it's buried. Easter eggs everywhere. Supposed to be, yeah. There's Easter eggs everywhere with that one. And uh, it's the game that shall not be named. <laughs> You can say it. We just can't say it. I see. The yeah. ET game. I, I got to do some Atari research. I did not even know there was an ET game for Atari, but now I'm that's, looking at it on Google. And there's a lot of falling that takes place. Um, uh, you you could just imagine who owns the rights to that. It's not us. Yeah. Someone who protects their rights very, very, very strongly. Yeah. Yeah. So um, so, so strongly they they can bury things. Um, <laughs> literally um yeah Anyways. no i mean that's the, yeah that, that's i mean that's just the thing that i love about uh the web3 space and and you know especially what you guys are doing is getting your ip out there and the ip that you are allowed to use uh, in in the different games <laughs> such as blancos or whatever is to come any different metaverses because i mean yeah i think that that's like well, i think For, fortnite kind of started that to be honest that's a great point as too and our ip catalog is is huge it's yeah. monstrous and as you can see in, in Atari Sunnyvale, uh, there's just 17 IP and a lot of the more well-known ones. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to be bringing back, me and Scott love looking back at, at everything and, and our history and, 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 and the obscure things. And Atari had the best artists in the 70s and 80s. Uh, we had a partner, uh, partnership with DC and had six comics uh, it, with DC artists, like the same ones that were doing Batman and Superman. And it's, we have amazing content that we still like, you know, we're bringing back what is old as new again with that stuff, but we're also going deep in our IP catalog and we'll be doing some cool activations with some of the more bizarre titles. Um, maybe even some unreleased ones, things like that. So um, uh, we have a lot to work with. And then what we do with it is, is, you know, uh, we're going to need community support and, and help and, and decisions even, you know, we will, we'll bring back one of those games and just have a community, the community build it, something like that. There's yeah. a lot we can do. Well, you know, speaking of artists, that, that can segue us into our next topic. Is your guys' uh, Genesis NFT meant that you guys – did it just happen last week? Happened With the, Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday. Tuesday, Tuesday. So it was uh, Atari, and you guys partnered up with uh, Butcher Billy. I, I believe I was reading not, his not, uh, not to be confused with Billy Butcher from The Boys. <laughs> not to be confused, but he's Butcher Billy, famous artist um, – he uh, helped you guys with your Genesis uh, NFT mint, uh, and uh, how how did that go? You guys did twenty six hundred NFTs. Why why uh, twenty six? Or I guess was that the the console the twenty six hundred? Exactly. Yeah. The console. Oh, great 2600. news! One of our mods just realized that yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I never Someone played Atari, so I I don't no idea. Scott, do you want to talk uh, about this yeah. project? It's your baby. Yeah, it's twenty six hundred uh, NFTs given to fifty two hundred public allow list winners, which 5200 is another important console. Um, but some people don't know is the, I believe the 5200 was actually called Project X before yeah. they, they named it uh, properly. So the X sig signifies a lot beyond even, I know Tyler has some, some history with the X as well, but this project was all about creating a utility based access based NFT, um, but making sure that it, it was true to the history, even the website as we're looking here, um, the spirit of innovation that Atari had. You know, we've talked about Web3 and Sandbox. Uh, Atari 
was able to to survive 50 years due to the relationships due to the third party developers and the ip that was created so with this what we wanted to do was just make a generative poster run where all 2600 nfts are different there's unique 371 traits that create a fun game of collecting what you like while some collectors may collect on a rarity level others are collecting what they want to hang up you see over tyler's shoulder a wonderful poster and what's cool about the posters is that they're going to be limited based on the, the number of times that the NFT holder changes, right? So if Tyler ordered that poster behind him, he owns that well, NFT. I think it's important to say that we will have a wallet connected print service. To just the holder can print it. Absolutely. And it'll, it'll count how many times that thing has been printed. So one, we just wanted to create something people like from the art level. We wanted to make art and posters that people would enjoy based on a game that they either played or the art that they really just want to put up in their their you know game den. Um, and then beyond that, there's a lot of utility with this project related to various partnership activations and credits. Of uh, Unstoppable Domain is one that'll be rolling out very 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 soon. Um, and then this is going to be a constant gamification project where we we look at what traits exist. If there's Easter eggs, if there's misprints, what sticker or logo you may have. And it's going to be something where, you know, the more NFTs you own, the higher possibility you have to win various things such as hardware, NFTs, digital items, merchandise, clothing. Um, and then, of course, opportunities for other and, web and games and games. You always forget games. Oh, I do. We're do, I we're do a lot of games. I don't know how like, I actually, games. Atari games. Yeah, we have, we have a lot in our catalog and a lot coming up. So there's going to be a lot of access, a lot of giveaways, competitions, and and even yeah, just just surprises along the way. With with the help of our developers, we're we're creating some some cool things. Yeah. So the, to just really wrap up this project, it's really amazing art that is our Genesis X collection here at Atari that will pretty much allow us to set boundaries around anything we've done and bring them all in-house and, and bring them not in-house from a standpoint of control, but of rewarding and providing benefits to not only this project, but all of the projects we've done to date as well. So yep. this is that Genesis pass you want to have, because if we launch something next, which I promise we are, it's not even alpha. We are launching something again down yeah. the road. This is your access pass to that. Okay, so this original and, uh, collection and, holds the keys to it all, pretty much what you're saying. Oh, you just said a really important word. <laughs> yeah, key, uh, uh, key, key is, a, is a good one. Um, and uh, like we, the, the key thing is is we, we were the uh, first discoverable Easter egg in Adventure. In Adventure, you collect keys. And uh, it's the end of Ready Player One. Um, and it also is, uh, uh, it said, the Easter egg in Adventure say created by uh, I'm blanking on his name right now, Scott. Um uh, Warren. No. Uh, talking about Yars, you're talking about Adventure Easter egg? It's yeah. Warren. Yeah. Right? His name's Warren. Warren is his name. Warren, yeah. And um and so so we're integrating and that was so we could get his name in the game, which early early game develop uh, game companies didn't allow their developers to do. Um, so that's a lot of what the blockchain um, and, and blockchain technology and art uh, allow uh, for that ownership piece of it. Um, and you didn't even mention, Scott, the, the, the one, the, a big one, one of our biggest utilities in the short term is going to be uh, 40 uh, season three alpha passes for the sandbox. Um, so we'll have, uh, we'll be giving those away to these holders of, of this uh Fifty years of Atari and FP collection. They're excited yeah. about that. They talk about it a lot in Discord. Everybody's pretty excited. <laughs> Is it going to be like just a random giveaway? Are you guys going to do some type of contest? Who knows? Wow. We know, but who knows? <laughs> 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 All right, no, no alpha, no alpha spill here. I think you know from reading about the project to me, I think the coolest thing was uh, the poster that that you're able to claim with the art because I think definitely onboarding new people into the NFT space. Like they need something physical they can touch. When I, when I tell people I'm buying, you know, a $5,000 JPEG on the internet, they're like, what in the world's wrong with you? Why are you like, why do you have this picture of the seal? Why do you have this? But when there's like a physical product, you're like, Hey, I got this Atari NFT. You know, we went through a printing company. Like you're able to pick like the paper, the frame and everything. Correct. Frame, paper, print, matting, size of matting. Um, 
yeah and and you can order sizes i mean we were just chatting with our team i mean what was it 23 by 30 it it, it was huge right so there's some huge right. sizes you can pick what size you want and and what's great about it is again it's it's holder only so yeah. no one no one can get that print um we have mechanisms that will show that it's from our store and no one can own that print unless you own that nft now if you sell that nft you, you know you don't have to pack up your your print and ship it with <laughs> it um but you're opening up the public or whoever buys that nft next now to have number two and then that yeah. sells you know we've had over 3400 sales and nfts changing hands that that could be up to 3400 prints so the best way to ensure that your print is a one of one sitting on your wall is to never sell it do you do you charge someone to for each print that they get they so pay a fee? it's a good question so all holders will get a discount for our print print shop and print services and for future merchandise as well not specific to just the posters um but 10 percent of our supply anyone that has a sticker in the bottom left will get a free framed print um with free shipping as well and it's global shipping so we did add again it's, it's all about gamification for us like a simple example of that is if you load our website on a cell phone and you load it on a desktop, you're going to get a different experience. There's actually yeah. different hints on the website, depending on how you load it. And that approach is really embedded in everything we do. How can we create an experience where people actually have to pay attention and read that, that it, it's they different, right? Read. They don't want to read. Absolutely. <laughs> but I, I will say you don't have to, as someone who, who may not read that stuff, uh, you absolutely do not have to, but well, you may just be missing out on, on maybe you're, one or two You're a step things. ahead if you read it. If yeah, you go on the hunt for Easter people. eggs, you go you go but on a hunt for Easter eggs, you will absolutely find them throughout anything we've done up until this point. If you're not a big reader, which myself, I'm not a big reader, but when I'm on the hunt for like trying to find a hint or a secret, mm -hmm. I will go, you know, around the world 10 times to get that done because it's you you know we've seen that in the community where a lot of people are trying to find these hidden easter eggs to be the first to find it um yeah. is it's such a big deal especially when you saw that with adventure back in the day when the first easter egg got found um i loved hearing people finding easter eggs in our sandbox experience as well um those are fun those are really I, fun i just ran into it this morning the first time i, I saw it where it actually was i fell into it on accident <laughs> yeah okay we all know i'm not good at games it's fine and plus it turns out you're not supposed to play with like your mouse or like with your like computer you're supposed to have a mouse um apparently that's going to make it easier but yeah uh i thought the the sandbox experience is lovely i did get stuck a few times trying to jump into places it's it's just not as I said I'm like I have very poor um, fine motor skills so you were on were you on a you were on a trackpad like on your laptop yep yep that's oh. what I was doing okay and I can I can the, see why that'd be difficult yeah yeah so you wonder why they hired me don't you <laughs> hey well you know you you get the the social media so if you don't need to you don't need to be gaming in the experience <laughs> I mean I try I've tried them all I'm not saying like we're talking about streaming and what we're going to do on our Twitch channel. I'm like, okay, well, I'm out. Nobody <laughs> wants to see that. So we're going to have to have Scott Carly do that. Cause... Carly was blockchain gaming before any of us. Uh, I mean, at least me. I won't speak for Scott. But, uh, you yeah, know, she, she, she's, she's being humble on this one. She, she enjoys the game. And I think that's all that matters is to be able to enjoy the experience. Um, yeah. I know. I, I know uh, growing up, I used to just sit there and watch my dad play games. And mainly like Turok. I remember it's ingrained in my head. Turok on N64, one of our favorites. He had all the classic. Comics. And um, and uh, he was so bad. And he still to this day has to look down at the controller in order to see which <laughs> button he's going to press. And but I just enjoyed watching it. And it's not about it's not about how good you necessarily are. It, it's it, a lot of it's just the experience and you have fun doing it. I used to watch my dad and we played uh, Doom. So in the past year during the pandemic, I did get. The, I think it's 1993 edition of Doom, and that was a lot of fun. It, so I know this. I think I'm the only one who knows this. Carly did do one live stream on Twitch just to test it out, and she's playing Doom, and it's early on, and it's a bad webcam. If anyone could find that, that props to you, and, and maybe they get something. I don't know. I thought I deleted it. 
I, maybe it did. Maybe it exists. I don't know. So it's another, <laughs> another Easter egg. I hope not. It's probably it's thirty minutes of me being startled by things <laughs> and running into walls. Um, so, I mean, you, you just mentioned, I guess, you know, you guys are going to start doing Twitch live streams. Uh, what are, what are your guys' plans for that? Content, oh, it's going to be content. an hour of me running into digital walls <laughs> and okay. whoever lasts the longest gets a prize. Can, can we last, do that in VR? So you have to run into real walls? <laughs> no. Um, Scott, do you want to jump on that? Yeah. So we're, we're working internally on creating a, it will keep it light lip for now, but some type of program that, that empowers content creation um, and creators. But what we're going to do from our end is really to start playing games with the community, start hosting conversations such as we're having here today um, and get back to just having fun. So we're going to work with one content creators that we've been in contact with. We're going to work within content creators that are inside of our community. We have some amazing community members that um, really like our ambassadors for us. So we're, we're really to, trying to define what that looks like for us. Um, but it's going to just be about getting content out there and playing games and, and creating a community and an environment where people can find others to play with. Um, you know, historically it's been like looking for groups or looking for team. You make a post on whatever console you're playing, try to find someone to play with back in the day it was Merck M I R C. You know, so we we want to create that discord element of, you know, you're playing the new Call of Duty. You got a beta code last night and you, you're looking for some people to play with. We want them to be able to hop in the discord, hop in a voice channel, be able to play that game. Or if you want to hop into wants the, to, to right. run some Apex Legends, I am down. I, knew, I, I knew have mentioned coming. that in discord, Tyler. I've told them you're uh, Apex fan. And that's like an important point, though. Like, we're not just here for Atari games. Like, we love them. We're going to build around them. They're part of who we are but we are also just like embracing gaming and gamers and having fun. Right. Like, so I don't like, we don't care that we don't own apex. Let's go play. Yeah, Not yeah. me, but them. Absolutely. Those guys. The friendships you can make in this space is what, what allowed me to land at Atari was the friendships I've made in this space. And some of the, the best experience I've had in this space is sitting in a discord channel, talking about nothing and playing a video game with, with my friends. It's, yep. I think that's the best use case out of Discord, in my opinion, is being able to find like-minded individuals and share experiences with them. Whether it's gaming or you're you're judging wine to gr in a group, it's a book club, whatever it may be, right? So for us, we're, we're hyper-focused on that fun. And for those who are a little bit maybe less social like myself, if you just want to play a game in silence with me, happy to do it. <laughs> I'll, I'll, well, if you're play, I'll, well, real quick, if you're playing that. Apex, but, but, I, but for me, I just you know sometimes it's just like all right, let's let's, let's work together and, and do and play some games, and uh, there's there's a little bit for every everyone, including those uh, that may be a little bit more on the on the introverted side. Hit me up. I would I would be highly Which concerned. Sounds like a non that's a non introverted name. That's a contradiction, but yes. If, if you're, um, you're playing Apex without comms, I'm I'm highly concerned at this. Point. <laughs> it's the best ping comm system in in any game ever created, in my opinion. So, not 100 percent needed. Sharp, what's your favorite game? What do you play? Uh, I used to play Call of Duty professionally, so I I still dabble in some Call of Duty here. I played the beta last night a little bit. Um, Apex. I downloaded what, it. I have not played it, it yet. Though. What do I think? I, it's it's better than like the last two that have come out. It, it's kind of a lot like the Modern Warfare 2019. So yep. definitely should be a better game than what they've been putting out. Ho hopefully Warzone 2 is good. Hopefully it's a fun time. Yep. So and maybe that's we'll beautiful... have to do a Twitch stream with you guys playing. I, I, I would be down to come on the Atari mm -hmm. Twitch, play some Call of Duty. Let's yeah. make it happen. Let's make it happen. And that's the beautiful thing about gaming, right? That when you have gaming and Web3, normally like Gaming doesn't really see a bear market unless you go back to the 80s. Um, <laughs> video game crash? Yeah. yeah <laughs> outside of that, there really hasn't been a video game bear market. So even when you're experiencing a financial bear market or, you know, people reluctant to, to enter new things or spend money, people are always going to be playing games. They're always yeah. going to buy new games. That bear market, no matter the external circumstances that are taking place, gaming is not going anywhere. Yeah. No, I 100% agree. And, and definitely... Yeah. That's why, like, I, I still look at projects like the Sandbox and just any other games that are developing. A lot of games come on here and talk about what they're developing. And I never really ask them, like, how they feel about the current market conditions because everything is, 
you know, down That's because it. yeah, people game no matter what they're doing, they're going to be gaming no matter the uh, circumstances of, of the world. So definitely love it's also, you like, it's a good place to go when the game, when the world isn't doing great, you know, it's, yeah. a, nice it's escape. a good, it's, good escape. Mm -hmm. It definitely was mine. And, uh, uh, yeah, there's the, the, the recession proof items are gaming and, and cosmetics. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's actually true. That's not a, I didn't just make that up. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did want to ask real quick because we are coming towards the end of the show. On the the roadmap that the Slater Eight showed on screen, um, you know, there was something that said book flights, something fun. You know, there, there's a little bit of a mystery there. There's a palm tree. Like, what what is that? Hosting <laughs> a sleepover at my house. I live in Orlando. We're gonna have a land party. <laughs> that's, I think there might be some legal issues with that. That's that's not true. <laughs> no, not at all we're we're going to uh, um, we'll, we'll see um, yeah i don't want to leak too much on that one it it'll definitely be something fun it does there might be a like we're, we'll, 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 we'll we'll be active in events and 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 other things so um the, the, we'll have more of a presence everywhere is is pretty much what that means but yeah, here's the thing right like you see people. that and you got to wonder what it is that's fun I know. I think I would I'm thinking. Can we, can we the land party? I'm That'd thinking of, if I if I hold one of the Genesis NFTs, we're going to like Aruba or something on some nice vacation. That's what I'm thinking. Oh no, no, no. we're we're not that fancy. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. No, no, we're not we're not doing a, a. Oh, maybe what's what would be the gaming version of Firefest? Let's, let's Atari runs the, the fire new Firefest <laughs> in a remote island in the Bahamas. Yeah, let's do that. The fire fest. Now we're getting legal involved. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that that'll we'll we'll end it there on fire fest. The Atari fire fest will coming up uh, at Scott's at Scott's house. So bring I your wanna, sandwiches. I, thank you. Bring your tents. Bring somewhere to sleep. I want to thank you guys for coming on uh, the show today. I greatly appreciate it. Um, I think we had a good conversation, and I think people in chat enjoyed it as well. Yeah, and and we talked a lot about ourselves. What do you want to what What do you want to say about yourself? Like I, I, at the end, you know, everyone says like, what do you want to like, uh, like, like, you know, chill, chill. And, uh, <laughs> we just basically just kind of, we, we try not to chill as much as possible, but we kind of just did for a good 56 straight minutes. So, so sharp, give us, give us something. Give you something. I mean, I don't really have anything to chill. I just, you know, I love doing the show cause it, it's, it lets me talk to so many different people and, you know, I'm talking to people developing games, you know, building in the sandbox or different metaverses or different uh, DeFi protocols, which that's more a little bit boring. Slater, don't get any more DeFi protocols on the show. Um, but, you know, the stuff that, you know, that people are building, I love to hear about that and just meeting so many different people. And, you know, I'm, I'm glad to be a part of the space. Well, you're an excellent host and you ask great questions. So thank you so much for having us. And also shout out to Brian. Um, in the comments, he's a great community member. He's the best and great beard, great beard. Um, great. He does have a great yeah. beard and we're going to hold you to that call of duty stream, man. We'll get, definitely get that set up. Oh yeah, no, for sure. I'm down. I'm down to do that for sure. But, uh, yeah, thank everyone uh, for watching. I appreciate it. you guys. We won't hold you up much longer on your Friday. Let you enjoy the weekend. Uh, we will be live again on Monday, I believe, at 12 o'clock Eastern, same time. So make sure you guys are following the stream. Join the Atari Discord. You know, go hang out in the, in the social hub uh, on and, to, and check out their Season 3 Alpha uh, gameplay and stuff like that. And, yeah, hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thanks so much for having us. Thank you, Thank you for coming Thank on. You.